When we succeed, we rejoice. When we fail, we learn. With this thought in mind, we have come up with this show, which helps you, our audience members, learn from not just the successes, but the failures of some of the most successful people in the country. Hello everyone, I'm Bansi Agarwal and you're watching If I Had Not Failed on News24, coming to you straight from Hotel Yakinyati. My guest today is a seasoned entrepreneur. His career over two decades has given him the opportunity to work in a variety of sectors, from food to real estate to banking to technology. In fact, he is instrumental in changing the face of Nepal with his innovations and a sound business sense. Today, I'll be speaking to none other than the managing director of Dish Home, the chairman of Kamana Seva Bikas Bank. Mr. Sudeep Acharya. Namaste sir, thank you so much for agreeing to come. It really means a lot to me that you came here and you're willing to share and have these wonderful conversations that I can learn from. I'm really looking forward to that. Thank you very much for inviting me. Without much ado, I'd like to start. And my first question to you is this. What do you consider your greatest failure and why? I, you know, being a businessman and working, always thinking to be a successful businessman you think you can do or you know what you're doing right and uh, I was young at the time and uh, I guess my dad he also believed in me I had studied in the US I came back and um, started uh, one business which I knew was not going to work right after I started probably about a month you in a month I got the feel and my idea was, you know, I just need to get out of this. And uh, that was, I think, you know, for me, the biggest failure in my life, but also a lesson learned. And uh, I, I can tell you what it was. Uh, I was 21, 22 years old, uh, just graduated from uh, the university and came to Nepal. And uh, I had worked, you know, as a in, in the US while studying, I had worked in different uh, odd jobs. And one of the odd jobs was making uh, tortillas. And I thought, you know, that would sell like hotcakes in Nepal for some reason, I don't know. So <laughs> I came back, then uh, I had seen, you know, like how they made, the, made it in the US and uh, started looking for, you know, manufacturers of machines. And my dad also being in the food business thought it was a great idea. So we jumped into it and, um, but you know, after a month or so, nothing was working. I knew it was going downhill. So I would consider that, you know, the biggest failure, failure in my life. Otherwise, you know, I've been pretty successful in other, other terms. I, I love how you, you know, sort of talk about this big failure that happened mm -hmm. and it happened right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, imagine sort of the hope spinned on you in a lot of ways, right? You've just come back from the US, your family is expecting great things out of you. Mm -hmm. At that point, to fail on like, let's say the first big venture that you did in Nepal, how did it make you feel? Uh, it was a, I mean, very, very terrible feeling. I mean, I thought, you know, like I knew what I was doing, right? I knew what was going on in the world. I knew if it works in the US, why, why doesn't it work in Nepal? I mean, everything, you know, like, uh, it, it didn't make sense to me, you know, like, uh, I was asking what, what, you know, how, why, why was it me? Why did I choose this? I mean, these kind of questions came to me, like, all along, and um, felt really, really, you know, like, low. Uh, I never thought, you know, I, would, I could come out of it. Uh, it. It was a pathetic feeling, I can tell you that. But did you take responsibility for that failure yourself? Or did you blame it on, oh, you know, maybe the economy is like this, the time is not right? Or did you take responsibility and you said, listen, this is what happened and it's my choice, my fault, and now I need to move on. How did you deal with that? Because very often we find that it's difficult to sort of internalize and take responsibility for what could have been avoided by us. Uh, of course, you know, like when you fail, you start thinking about... Uh, what was what is the failure you know like how how did it happen and um, th of course there was like technical things that you know that didn't work uh, but deep down inside what I felt was 
I was naive or I did not do the homework properly. That's what I felt. And, um, you know, the only feeling I had is I have to move out of this. If I stay on this, you know, uh, my dad was like, maybe we should do something, you know, like, I mean, he's been in the food business for quite a while. Uh, he was a pioneer in, uh, in the industry. So I felt like, you know, there was a, some kind of a class, some kind of difference. But for me, it was, you know, this is a no-go, you know, I have to stop. If I dwell on this, I will get lost. So you wanted to basically cut your losses. Exactly. How soon did you realize that it's probably the wise thing to do? I think I gave it about three months time and uh, tried different things um, with the product, you know, coming up with new ideas. Uh, it was pretty, you know, uh, interesting, but at the same time, it was not working. It was not going on as I expected. Do you think it's also because you were very early in the market? Because maybe, let's talk, how, how many years ago was this? Oh, that was like 20 years back. Maybe More than 20 years back, 25 maybe, years back. Right. Maybe as an economy, maybe as a country, maybe as a people, we were not ready to accept tortillas then. Do you think that could also be um, one of the causes? I think it, it was not, you know, like uh, if I look at uh, in the hindsight, uh, I think it was a bad choice. I really believe it was a bad choice. I thought I knew what I was doing and I had not done my homework. That was the saddest part, you know. And uh, the way I thought at the time was, uh, you know, I did my homework. It's not like I did not, I just came up with it and then said, you know, it's going to work. And uh, one of the things I looked at was, oh, it's working in, in the United States. You know, they're selling it uh, really well. Even uh, some of the packaged foods were, uh, you could find it in uh, India as well. I used to visit India at the time, uh, all the time. And uh, I saw, you know, coming in India as well. So I thought this can happen in, in Nepal as well. There are people, you know, who like, uh, and tortilla is very similar to chapati or roti. And, uh, and the concept was good because a lot of people really like the concept, uh, you know. And my dad had started uh, instant noodles. Uh, and so for me, this was kind of a continuation of the family business, right? So, but the worst thing about this was the product was not up to the mark. And um, there were reasons, you know, I could look for reasons, uh, I still can, but uh, I really think I, I made a bad choice. And what did you learn from the bad choice? To, you know, always, you have to think about, you cannot just copy something or you cannot, you have to look at the environment, society, uh, culture, uh, and also, you know, look at the technology the environment, which is very much different. One of the things it didn't work out was because, in my opinion, I still, you know, don't know, but at the time was uh, the, um, the wheat we get in Nepal is much lower quality than the wheat we get in the US. And it was not possible at the time to get, you know, something from outside. But anyways, that is, you know, the technical part. But uh, for me, you know, I think I was too young to handle such kind of things. And uh, I was very grateful to my father for supporting me. But, you know, it was kind of a learning step for me and a very bad experience to, you know, uh, jump on. How important was your father's support for a young boy who comes in, does his first big project, wants to sort of take the family business forward mm -hmm. and then gets sort of stuck and has this roadblock? Mm -hmm. uh, of course, it was an emotional turbulent period for you, but how much did your father's support mean to you at that point? Oh, that meant a lot. I mean, if he hadn't supported me, I, I don't think I could have done anything else. And uh, that was very important. And I think my, I mean, my family, uh, my father especially, is always very uh, risk taker. So. You know, even when he started the noodles industry or many other things in his life, he's taken a lot of risks. And, um, you know, I was stepping on the same footsteps he was doing. So sometimes you, you know, his call was sometimes you do good, sometimes you fail. And uh, just had to take it with a pinch of salt. Sometimes you do good and sometimes you just fail. Yeah. You just said that. Mm -hmm. How would your life be different if you had not failed that time? 
maybe you know like <laughs> if you really look at it you know being more uh, being modest if i hadn't failed i would have probably failed much in a bigger way uh because you know i hadn't done the homework properly right so i mean that failure kept me at toes uh at what i'm doing afterwards and maybe if you hadn't failed we'd all be eating tortillas today right <laughs> we'd be having tortillas instead of dal bata i mean i don't know that's a guess to me but did that failure make you more aware and more cautious of doing your homework and your research properly and understanding your target market for whatever you did next because what you're doing now again like this show mm-hmm. it's a very big project it's something that has huge implications even within the economy because you're actually able to impact and give a kind of infrastructure and knowledge to a lot of people in different parts of the country so to understand the target market to understand nepal to understand the way this place works did that sort of you know oh my god if i don't do my research i might fail did that give you this sense of responsibility and this sense of i have to do my homework properly oh definitely definitely of course you know like when you even when you fail you still because you are a risk taker you're a business person you will always have to go with your gut feeling or mm-hmm. somewhere you know you have to take make a choice right so but when you make that choice now you think you know is this the right decision do you have all the all the numbers do you have what it takes so you you look at the things in a whole you know you don't look at it like this is going to work and you just jump on board so definitely um it, it changed the whole perspective about doing business for me when you were going through this failure when you were going through you know in the middle of this crisis or this roadblock let's say or this struggle what was the mental conversation because a lot of times how we talk to ourselves and how mm-hmm. we sort of perceive other conversations really impact us what was the mental conversation that was happening i was thinking you know like i probably never do business again this is always now i have that's why you know like immediately after that i went to the us to do my masters and i never thought like you know business is my is going to be my career and um, i said you know i'm not probably not built for it i mean that was going on in my head all the time and yet today we know you as a successful businessman mm-hmm. what did it take for you to change this self talk <coughs> how did you develop this inherent sense of confidence that it happened it's in the past and now i can move on with a lot more information and knowledge and self belief how did that happen and um, i think i was i was you know one of the like i said in business sometimes you fail sometimes you do good and uh, after i moved to the us for studies i did some more business at the same time i was studying and i did really good so you know the confidence i had lost very very poorly very badly it came back to me immediately so i was like okay now i know how it needs to be done before you know i was a risk taker but now my way was to to take risks but in a calculated way so always you know counting what's going on uh always counting the risks versus uh the opportunity so this is all uh, you know how it started if i hadn't feel at the time i'd probably be you know just be going up maybe you know like uh like i said have a big fall uh rather than that you know that really helped me out in the way i think not only about business just you know e- even about life and uh how to live i'm getting two questions which i want to ask you mm-hmm. firstly you spoke about calculated risks and how mm-hmm. this prepared you to sort of avoid a bigger fall mm-hmm. right uh how did you manage to now you feel grateful about it how did you manage to change the feeling about the failure because at one point it really emotionally sort of sucked you out and you felt bad about it how did you manage to change how you felt about that failure today you say you're grateful you're grateful it happened it helped you avoid a bigger fall how did you realize that i i think it depends in uh, person to person and uh, of course you know like when you have a failure it lingers on you for a while uh, until you have another success and it lingered with me for a while but i decided like i need to get out of this 
I cannot just, you know, if I linger on it, then I'll be bound to make another mistake. So I kind of blocked it out, to be very frank with you. So I said, you know, I'm going to go study. So then, you know, it's out of my mind. I tried, it didn't work. So next thing I'm going to do is going to be different. So that's how I, you know, uh, if I had dwelled on it, I think uh, I would have never, you know, I would have just stuck with it and never be able to get out. When you were going through this failure and you were talking about learning and then you went to do your masters and all of that, you spoke about like calculated risks, taking calculated risks. Now today we're in this time where a lot of youngsters are very excited about the idea of becoming entrepreneurs. Let me give you a tiny experience of my own. 15 years ago when I was training in colleges, no, 13 years ago when I was training college students, everyone wanted to be a banker. Trust me. I would ask, okay, so what do you want to do? You're doing your MBA, ma'am, bank. Bank maga jagir karne, right? Bank. Mm -hmm. Today when I go into a same class, same age, same study, same field or whatever, so many people are going to be like, ma'am, I want to be an entrepreneur. They think because of the glamour associated with that word and because of the way it sounds, they think it's, it's sort of easy and people forget that sort of calculation and all the other, the pain that goes into it really, the struggle of it. How did you realize, because again, as a youngster, you were drawn to the idea of, okay, my dad's a risk taker, mm -hmm. let me be like that. But how did you sort of understand the mental balance it needs for a youngster who wants to be an, an entrepreneur to take a calculated risk? Well, I think, you know, um, most of the time, the youngsters, they, they're exactly like me, you know. They, they don't see the dark side or the difficult side or what happens if you fail. I think that's where, you know, that's where the problem lies. But uh, when, you, when you start, you know, analyzing, uh, looking at from the holistic way, from different perspectives, then only, you know, you can see... Uh, how to, you know how you going going to do this but uh, being an entrepreneur is not easy a uh, lot of people you know it's almost i think it's almost like uh, i would say being a poet mm -hmm. you know being a poet um, anybody can write the poetry right but anybody can may play music but can you play a good tune can you write a good poetry it's almost entrepreneurship is also very very similar to that some some people you know are probably built for it some people have to try at it and I think I had to try at it and um, so the material has to be there you cannot z just be an entrepreneur you know just b uh, thinking you can be uh, be an entrepreneur you have to have the ingredients what are the ingredients uh, of course you know uh, I think the number one thing comes to mind my mind is you have to be very very innovative mm. You have to be very, very hardworking. You have to be very, very persistent. And um, you have to know what you're doing. You have to focus on the customer behavior, customer requirement. And sometimes what we do is, you know, like uh, being an entrepreneur is like, just like I did, you know. I know what the co consumer wants. I know what the product is. I know how to serve. But actually, we're not looking at it from the consumer side. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think, uh, that should be the first thing to start with. You know, whatever you're selling, whatever services you're selling or product you're selling, is that what the consumer is asking for or needing? Or can you, you know, the product or service you're, you're providing, is it necessary or is it, will that enhance the lifestyle of the consumer? So, you know, these things has to be answered first and then from there on, you know, then the hard work, the all the materials, you know, uh, the ingredients, the other ingredients, I would say. But the core ingredients, after you have the core in ingredients, you put in the salt or the sugar or the baking soda, whatever it, it's required. I like how you mention food all the time. So we talk about <laughs> salt and baking soda and the sugar as well. That's great. So now tell me one thing. Let's do a quick like an analysis or a case study because this is interesting. 
20, 25 years ago, when you tried to start a tortilla business, for a lot of reasons you thought it did not work out. Mm -hmm. Let's try and analyze how you think mm -hmm. differently and if you were to do the same thing right now, how would you approach it differently? What I want to get from this is, I want your insights as a seasoned entrepreneur to help the youngsters who are looking to get into a business about how they should start sort of thinking and how they should start planning and how exactly they go about the business of actually thinking of a business plan and looking at the numbers and analyzing all of that. How do you now, with your so many years of experience, analyze and take calculated risks? I want to understand the process a bit. How would you do it now? You know, one of the good things about Nepal is a uh, lot of you know things are not being done in Nepal, mm -hmm. which are already happening in, in the whole world, right? So, I mean, that, that should be a start. What's going on in the global market? Because um, of globalization, everything is coming to us at a you know, much greater speed than before. So, so one thing would be to find that, you know, what needs to be done I think you need to look at probably the world and then narrow it down to probably India. It's, you know, it's probably where uh, Nepal is very close to socioeconomically as well. And then, and then after you define those, what product service you're going to do, then you break it down. You, know, you break it down with the Nepali market, Nepali culture, uh, Nepali thought process. And then you build it from there. You know, the other parts are there, of course, the financing part, uh, you know, the legal part. Those parts should come at the, at the end. But first, you need to define what you want to do. I like that. And I like how you sort of managed to slowly narrow it down, mm -hmm. understanding what's available mm -hmm. and understanding what the next few years are going to bring for the world mm -hmm. and then trying to sort of cater to our people in Nepal. What are the top three things that you think an entrepreneur can learn from their failures? You learned a lot, but three things apart from that, maybe the three things that you can learn, especially let's say from early failures, because a lot of the people watching this show are youngsters and they are sort of in that process, you know, maybe just about to start their first venture, maybe somebody who start, had a stumble, had a little roadblock and doesn't really know what to do. And they're watching this to hear your perspective on how to get over something like that. You mean like, um, what would be, what would you learn from the failures? Mm, yes. Um, failure does not mean, you know, like you're out. I mean, that, that's the first thing I would say. You, there's always a second time you can get up, or even the third time you can get up. And uh, you should al always keep that in mind. And from failure, you need to get the experience. So you know what you're going to do, you know, whatever you did not do it right, you don't do it again. Whatever you did right, you copy, or you you know put it forward. And um, the third thing is to you know, you'll be down for a while, but there is always there is always more more to come. So if you want to be an entrepreneur and this is your life choice, then you cannot say you know I failed and then I'm done. It has to be I failed now. I have something else to do. And I completely believe what you're saying because this is coming straight from the horse's mouth. You failed, you believed you were done, yet you realized you were not done and you came and you came with such a bang. And I love, I love how there's been this sort of up and down kind of trajectory in the entire story because that really gives it so much more depth. Do you also feel that your failure made you more humble? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, if you, people who don't fail, they're usually not humble. And I think the failure brings down, you know, brings you down to reality, brings you down close to the earth. Mm -hmm. And um, I think failure is, you know, in a way, a great way to start. Uh, I mean, uh, it sounds bad, but at the same time, it and it's better to fail early than later in life. So, so don't be afraid to fail. And if you, of course, if you don't fail, that's good. But if you fail, you just get up and then uh, move ahead. I like that. I also like that you're in this. Now, the business you're doing currently mm -hmm. is, is very innovative. It's, it's technology. It's, it's got to do with the future rather than the past. And thankfully, we're not doing tortillas anymore. So it's not so much about you know getting to understand the taste of the people. It's in a different way. 
what are some of the failures or what not the failures but the potential mistakes that people entering the technology sphere can make or tend to make uh, a lot of times you know like i i did say that we need to you know look at the global market and then uh, do these things right narrow it down and then bring it to uh, to our market right but a lot of times what we, we what we tend to do is we tend to just copy you know and we we tend to forget where we are at uh, that is the biggest mistake uh, i've seen you know a lot of people do it because somebody else has done it so i can do the same and um, copying only does not work it has to you have to be innovative with technology it has to be it's always you're doing something new all the time it cannot be a static you know you don't like it's not like food business food business you even in food business you know you have to do some flavoring all the time but with technology it's always you have to be on the edge if you're not somebody else going to take over your market the disruption and the pressure is too high too high too high mm -hmm. how do you deal with that stress <laughs> cuz you you're smiling yeah, all yeah. the time no i mean of course you know you have to learn to smile you know <laughs> <laughs> that's that's wonderful right? uh, how do you deal with that because i understand with technology let's look at a company like let's say a kodak or a nokia yeah. fabulous companies i grew up on kodak reels i mean you know we used to have those 36 reel and we would go and get pictures printed and then they're completely irrelevant today mm -hmm. how does somebody who's working so closely with technology understand that any day could be sort of your last day in business and how do you sort of prepare yourself and brace yourself to move faster than whatever is happening around again you know like i'll have to come back to the same thing as i told you before is you have to look at the world what's going on and then how do you pivot from the existing business how do you change how do you innovate how do you bring new stuff which again you know you could still fail just bringing something from you know from the global market does not mean you know you probably some a lot of times you might be ahead of time right and um, sometimes you are too late so you have to figure these things out but like i said you know the first thing would be you have to look at the what is the market what is the cultural social values of our country of our society and what are the customers looking for does that match with you know something you you are you are innovating you are changing those things has to be you know clearly looked at and uh, you have to do it at the right time and you know if you do it ahead of time again you're losing a lot of money if you do it too late you're way behind so it's it's a very very tricky stuff you know so if you can manage it good otherwise there you know, there could be another failure in the in the picture It's wonderful when you said this answer because I could actually literally draw parallels between your learnings from your first let's say failure and how you're applying it today in a completely different field which actually shows me the growth and the maturity that that sort of comes over the years. Do you think failure helps you become mature faster? Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean um when you don't you know like when I I was very young at the time. So for me uh the failure you know meant i was young you know i still have time and all that stuff but when when i failed i had a sense that you know my time was up yeah. you know what am i going to do next so definitely you know like i aged a uh, lot faster when i failed sure about it that's such a profound way of saying it i felt my time was up I can only imagine what it would have meant for a 23 24 year old boy who has his entire life ahead of him to mm -hmm. get that thought in his head mm -hmm. and to now be here where you're trying new things every day mm -hmm. at a much riper age and enjoying that process and I think your story for me has given me a lot of hope because the younger generation you know you have kids who are like oh I failed a chemistry exam my life is over my time is up I did that grade 9 my life is over because I failed chemistry 
doesn't matter you know and just listening to you say this sort of makes me realize that there are so many people who have these thoughts i had it too and there are so many people who have all of these thoughts who are like oh my god everything's over but the fact that it comes a full circle and if you have the courage the resilience the hard work as you said you can sort of turn things around and and that's just beautiful we're sort of coming towards the end of this and i'm just so glad that you shared so honestly without a filter and to talk about your failures cannot be easy my last two questions maybe for you would be from the food business mm -hmm. to now into technology there was a quite a pivot there there was quite a change what are some of food business again is manufacturing it's it's a very traditional kind mm -hmm. of a business what do you think would be some of the similarities that you found in these seemingly very different sectors similarities would be probably you know like even um, if you look at food business there is changes before uh, the globalization hit nepal i would say a lot of things would remain the same for food business you know it's the same thing you are selling the same uh, noodles or you know biscuit or whatever right but now after the globalization uh, which is coming at a much higher speed a higher velocity now things are very different you have to keep you know you, you have to be in your toes you have to be innovative even in food even any business you're doing mm -hmm. you cannot just be you know like this is it you know i'm done that's you know that's what i find different today i'm not just talking about technology field i'm talking about in every field technology it's moving faster but even in other businesses you cannot just say you know let me get this done and then you know uh, even if you build a house and Uh, you know give it for a rent which is the easiest way to do right even then there are new newer houses you know newer style newer designs new concepts coming up which is which is the changing market you have to you have to change it doesn't matter which business you are in you cannot be just you know sleeping and then counting your money not today. anymore not anymore not anymore I like that. I also like and technology has been a great enabler in all of this. Even in the food, even in globalization, even for somebody like me to know what sushi is mm -hmm. is possibly because of the internet or possibly mm -hmm. because of all the kind of media and things we're exposed to. My final question to you is this. Mm -hmm. As an entrepreneur, as somebody who has been there, seen everything, what has been the one, the one lesson you want everybody to learn from you? There's one thing, you know, I I really uh experience not from just from the failure from success as well is although you know like when i did the tortilla business i we folded it very soon a lot of times a lot of uh, entrepreneurs they also feel that you know this is not working and then they shut down and then you know close and i have found during my this experiences every business has a hump even when we were doing this dish home we had a very you know turmoilous uh, first few years and a lot of people you know like don't reach up to that hump and after you reach that hump then you know things get much better a lot of people fold just like i did but i think i folded it at the right time but a lot of people fold before they reach that hump and then experience failure so my you know one thing to entrepreneurs is you have to know i think you will know it in your you know you have you'll have that gut feeling that this has to work i have put in my efforts i know you know the uh, the market trend or how the business is going so they don't reach they don't wait till that hump and i would recommend you know don't be like me when i failed but wait till that hump that get over it that's brilliant honestly this is this is like literally like, like for a lot of people this would this this conversation is as meaningful as like an mba because there's just so many mindset things that you learn technical things can be learned off a book but conversations like this really enrich people and i think this this question and this very visual depiction of that hump and reaching that top and actually sort of being able to reach and you know tread that path i think the way you explained it was beautiful because you think that okay now you're grateful that the tortilla business you closed it at the right time but had you not waited for the hump 
maybe dish home wouldn't have been what it is today had you folded early maybe we wouldn't mm -hmm. have seen the technology we do see yeah. today and that's brilliant thank you so much for your insights it's been a wonderful conversation i've truly enjoyed asking you all of these questions because i feel i was getting more and more curious and i think that the way you communicate you sort of leave these little breadcrumbs and i want to catch on and i want to ask you more and more and it's been a fabulous conversation for me i was very curious to find out more thank you so much for sharing so honestly without a filter and thank you for all those insights because truly there have been very good takeaways for a lot of students and youngsters to learn from and to implement in their lives thank you so much thank you yeah, thank you very much thank you the conversation with mr acharya was extremely insightful today it was very nice and interesting for me to see how his experiences in his early career with failure have really shaped him and molded him and impacted the way he thinks on a much deeper level i was also very glad to hear his three main takeaways that of calculated risks that of failing early and that of knowing when to detach from a business i truly believe that young entrepreneurs students can learn a lot from his second take at doing business and how he built up his confidence slowly but surely thank you so much mr acharya for sharing for your talks most importantly your stories that have inspired so many people thank you